Commonwealth Shams retired from the Royal Australian Navy in 1988 after serving 41 years. He is very well known to my sister company and has remained a friend of Hobart over the years, and particularly in recent times. It is my pleasure to welcome you here today to address us. Commonwealth Shams. invited senior sailors to have a crack at handling the ship in man overboard drills. A boy is cast into the sea to represent the swimmer and the aim is to manoeuvre the, manoeuvre the ship and put the bridge alongside it as quickly as possible. The seamen were apparently a bit bashful about this caper but most of the technical types, perhaps having no fears that their professional qualities could be criticised, whatever the outcome, showed no such inhibitions. One very senior member of the engine room department was credited with a remark of the day. The boy was flashing past the bridge as he called for more stern revolutions. When it flashed past the stern, our hero was heard to remark something like, that bloody engine room never gets it right. <laughs> Continuing our look around inside the hull, we note that Hobart has suffered her share of corrosion and a fair wear and tear. The stuff that goes with 34 years in a tough, unforgiving environment. Combine these material factors with the need for commonality in matters like the aforementioned propulsion system and with today's design philosophy that warships and equipment they carry should function with a minimum number of persons on complement and we can see some reasons why she is paying off. Not that in this understanding makes us any happier. Today we all feel sad, something dear to us and something that has played an unforgettable part in our lives and in the history of our great country has come to the end of her productive days. But each one of us has additional feelings. What might the, what the, what might the sweethearts and wives of all who have sailed in her be thinking? Hmm, Hobart wasn't too bad really I suppose. Nice lines, has something of the looks of a thoroughbred filly, but I think there were times when he loved that damn ship and his mates more than he loved me. And what about the mothers? We have a very special mother with us today, the mother of our shipmate Ray Hunt, who was killed in action in this ship in Vietnam. Thank you very much, Mrs Hunt, for making the journey from Canberra with your daughter and son-in-law. I rather fancy that your feelings of personal grief will be tinged with feelings of great pride that you and all the other mums will be sharing. Just like you, they worried about their sons when they were away. I know that Ray's many friends here today will want to talk to you, so perhaps your son-in-law, Mr Bryant, would kindly raise his hand and just show where you're sitting. Thank you very much, right opposite the red carpet. <laughs> Thank you. My thanks also go to the Department of Veterans Affairs for locating you and for trying their best to locate the members of the late ordinary seaman Ray Butterworth's family. Today we have fond memories of our two Rays and our hearts extend sympathies to their relatives. Turning now to those who served in the best damn ship of the fleet, as the cruiser Hobart was fondly called, and by the way, there'll be a small door prize for the first person to tell me at the reception who of us here today served in both Hobarts. The older, door, the older brigade could be saying to themselves, 
DDG carried on the tradition. You only have to recall her well-documented performance in Vietnam and count up the Gloucester Cup she won, if you don't believe that. And wouldn't dear old Harry Howden be thrilled to be here with us today? He would smile and nod his head and say that DDG 39 was more than a worthy successor to his old ship, which served with such distinction in World War II. And they will be grateful too that the men of DDG 39 have injected numbers and energy into what has always been a very strong and proud ship association. It's up to us now, the DDG 39ers, to keep up that stimulus, not only for ourselves, but for those who will serve in a future Hobart. And the feelings of all the destroyer men themselves, pride again, reflections about getting on top of their jobs, looking back to many achievements, confidence that they did their service and their country proud in the best Hobart tradition. The multitude of high points, remembering how they and their mates uh, got away with the odd episode of undetected crime. One event that this DDG 39er is thinking about is a remark made to me by Captain Jackson, United States Navy, who was the commanding officer of the ship repair facility at Subic Bay when Hobart was being in record time after suffering what is called friendly fire. He said that he had never known a ship's company who had demonstrated so much cooperation, technical expertise and enthusiasm for getting the job completed. There are too many Hobart stories to cover today, but here are a few which don't appear in the decommissioning brochure. Participating in Cold War activities immediately after the hostage crisis in Iran, when the ship worked with four USN carrier battle groups in the air defence role and tracking sub Soviet submarines. The disappointment of all and the considerable inconvenience to many when news was received informally at the 11th hour that the fourth Vietnam deployment would not proceed. Those guys would have been busting to get stuck into it. Showing the flag at the US bicentenary celebrations in New York and circumnavigating the world in 1976. Exercising operational control of Iranian naval ships just before the overthrow of the Shah. And in an exercise off our north coasts, carrying out a decisive simulated bombardment at dawn, which completely surprised RAAF strike aircraft refuelling at Darwin. Hobart had detached for the main bodies 24 hours before, steamed 633 miles. To quote the captain, Hobart could do no wrong at that day. Now there's another door prize for this last one. Who was the captain of HMAS Perth who barracked for Hobart's rugby team when the two ships were matched against each other? The final element of the mix of feelings I'd like to mention are those that might be in the minds of today's decommissioning crew who have suffered the certainty that goes with watching the hourglass emptying and who now stand before their guests. May I ask you to recall a couple of lines of the old poem, The Laws of the Navy, quote, that the strength of the ship is the service and the strength of the service the ship, unquote. Do those lines still ring as true to you today as they did to your forebears in the past? I hope so. It would be all too easy, I guess, in these days of open-ended engagements to swallow the anchor when you march ashore shortly for the last time. But if you should be your decision, then of course I respect it. I hope you won't do that, though. You have very much to offer your Navy. You have very much to offer your country. And wouldn't it be rather nice to spread some of that famous Hobart spirit just a bit thicker throughout the service? Thank you from all of us, Commander Murray, for seeing the job through so effectively to the bitter end. Like every Hobart captain, you must be very, very proud of your officers and men. Before closing, I have to say that the most rewarding time for me in the Royal Australian Navy from 1939 to 1980 was in command of this wonderful ship 
with her superior all-round capability. Never did I feel so secure. Never did I feel that an enemy could get the better of me. We live in troubled and uncertain times. The expectation is there that, at very short notice, we may have to place young Australians into dangerous situations in support of our defence policy and our vital national interests. Therefore, I also have to say how concerned I am that Hobart's air defence and shore bombardment capabilities are not being replaced tomorrow in like or superior substance. I would really like to be sure that tomorrow's sailors and the soldiers that they deploy and support and sometimes may have to evacuate under fire will always feel as confident as I did that the odds are well and truly stacked in their favour. Thank you.